Hi everyone, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Welcome back to episode 6 of our General Order Space Mission number 1 to the Saturnian system. We're just about at the very crux of our journey right now. Um, we're in a base on the surface of Titan. You can hear the winds outside a little bit. Uh, Today we're going to make the hop from Titan over to Iapetus. I was planning to go all the way back to Earth, but I, I figure that's a little bit much to go from the bottom of one atmosphere to the bottom of another. That we, we definitely want a, uh, a nice middle ground in between that's a little bit more predictable, and that is Iapetus. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is figure out how long we need to stay on the surface of Titan. That's dictated by uh, how long it is going to be until um, the alignment between Titan and Iapetus allows for a flight. Um, so the first thing I need to do is get to the ship to do a little bit of calculations. Uh, we're, let's see, we're standing in front of uh, Johannes Kepler. Here is our base. And the ship is, looks like, on the north side. Let's see. So let's see what our orientation is. Oh, that's simple. We just walk straight forward. Oh, but don't forget to put the spacesuit on. Yeah, that, that would be bad if, if we forgot. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure outside. Uh, it's fine that way. Uh, the problem is I wouldn't be able to breathe oxygen. And um, the other problem is it's like minus 280-some Fahrenheit, I think. Actually, it might be minus 300. It's, all I know is it's 95 Kelvin. So it's, it's, it's whatever 95 Kelvin is. That's like 100... 170 Fahrenheit above absolute... Yeah, that's minus 300. Ingress successful. Perfect. Usually it doesn't read off ingress. It just says in, which is hilarious. But anyway, uh, nice that it's actually working out pretty well. And you can see our fuel's getting pretty low. Don't get too alarmed about that because um, we are still on track. Um, we are, I think, within 110 kilograms or uh, like 5% of where we're supposed to be right now, which is pretty good. So I'm not worried as of now. And, and I don't have any reason to expect that I will be. Okay, so let's, let's start planning. So let's power on the left MFD. And instead of referencing Titan, let's reference Saturn. Okay, so that's where Titan is. Now I want to find Iapetus, which is way the heck out there, as you can see here. And it looks like it's a really bad time to go to Iapetus. Um, so, so what I need to do and I'm going to calculate this off screen, is to figure out how long it's going to take to go from um, Saturn to Iapetus, figure out how many degrees Iapetus is going to move in that time, and then add 180 degrees uh, to where Titan should be at that point. So let me take care of the hard math off screen, and I'll explain to you my reason. Okay, here's how I solved it. Uh, so what I did was I went to my patched conic uh, calculator and plugged in all of the information for um, a Titan to Iapetus flight, which is exactly what I did to plan the mission to begin with. Um, so we have some information for Saturn, and then the Titan information, uh, the Iapetus information, and then we can get our burn estimates, which are in family with what we were predicting um, before the flight. Uh, as well as our transfer time. And that's the important number right there. So I took the transfer time and um, stuck that right here. 
and then also calculated the uh, well actually no I didn't calculate it I, I got it off um, the menu of orbiter if you go to uh, object info um, it's it's a it's a menu in orbiter I just straight up got the orbital period of Eapetus from that information uh, so then what I did was was I figured okay well we need to add on some time um, to get into orbit around Titan um, plus a full orbit to make any necessary plane changes that need to occur. Um, so what I did is I solved the orbital period, um, the circular orbital period of um, Titan at our altitude and then added an hour from that. So that comes out to, I'd say that's roughly four hours. Uh, added that to the transfer time to get the total flight time. Uh, then once I have the total flight time, I um, divide that against the total orbital period of Eapetus and then uh, multiply that by um, a full circle, 360 degrees, to get the degrees that Eapetus is going to move in that time, uh, which is 97.73. And remember, the, the Hohmann transfer will take you from one side of the system to the other. So that means I need to add 180 degrees. So when I do that, I get a final answer of 277.73. And that's the Titan to Eapetus phase found by the true longitude of Titan minus the true longitude of Eapetus. And when that's equal to 278, we go. Um, so I'll show you what I mean here on the MFD. Okay, so on my mouse cursor uh, in the in the lower left, you should see a TRL. Um, it's third from the bottom under OSC.EL, and then under uh, the Eapetus Gold information. So that number, um, what we're going to do is we're going to su subtract the green text from Titan two seventy eight point zero nine minus the yellow text. Of, of what you see over here, TRL. And right now it's coming out to about 17 degrees. So when, when the absolute value of that equates to 278, uh, it's time to go. It, it's really 277.73, but I'm saying 278 because it's gonna take time to pack up the base. Um, so that's it. Uh, at this point, we're done planning. I'm gonna, actually, it wasn't Dr. Aeronautics that I was controlling, it was Galileo. Oh man, that that's such a great that's such a great picture there. See, seeing the flag against the uh, titanium sky, that is awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pop out now. Egress successful. And head back inside and all we do is time lapse and wait for us to uh, get around. Very strange that they made the control for, for um, rotate the same as roll. That, that's not how I would do it. I would say rotate as y'all. Anyway. Well, of all the places to wait, this is honestly the best one. Ooh, it's Saturn! Unfortunately, we can't see the rings because uh, we're basically in Saturn's equatorial plane right now. That's the way it is with just about all the moons. We may luck out with Eapetus because it's it's pretty far out, but uh, there's certainly no guarantees. Uh, sorry, Kepler, we sort of ran into you there. And even though it's not 100% necessary, I'm going to just check the atmosphere to make sure that I'm in a safe zone. Analyzing. Atmospheric pressure nominal. Okay, I'm good. Uh, why didn't the suit come off? There we go. So I, I think I think it's interesting that it says 154 kilopascals and it's okay. Um, I do really like that. Uh, all you need to do is add oxygen and a, and a heck of a lot of uh, protection against the cold, and, and you're good. Uh, there's no pressurization needed on Titan.
Very nice. We're actually able to time lapse this. If you're really observant now, you can see the sun coming down just to the left and below Titan. It's about to cross in front of the flag on its way down. Okay, so it's the next morning on Titan. Uh, as you can see, uh, the true longitude of Eapetus is now 318.1, true longitude of Titan 235.08. And if you found the distance of the angle of the outer um, obtuse side um, of that angle, it would come out to negative 296, or not negative, 296.97 um, and uh, I rounded the wrong way um, instead of rounding up I should have rounded down to 277 so given it's it's climbing and 277.73 is the configuration we want um, it's now coming up on uh, 297 degrees right now so it is time to pack up for Eapetus Okay, that's me. I'm in this place. Put my spacesuit on. Oh, first I'll save. Always gotta save. It's never a bad time to save. going back outside so we got some work to do um, there are now three pieces of cargo uh, you remember the probe was sent to Saturn so it is uh, long gone um, and you can kind of see a little bit of illumination on Saturn right now which is pretty cool um, so the three pieces of cargo are going to be our um, control module, our life module, and uh, the flagpole. And I really don't want to um, start packing things up in there until everybody's got their spacesuits on. Uh, that would be a complete disaster. Um, it's too bad all Orbiter's not multiplayer because I, I could see that happening as a prank. Someone walking up and pressing you and then, and then running away as quickly as possible, getting in their spacecraft. Um, that would cause a lot of deaths. Anyway, uh, the, the only thing that we can really do right now is pack up our flagpole here. So I'm going to press one button and the flagpole is going to instantly disappear into a box. Let's get the right angle here. 
right there, and you. That's it. So we've packed the flag. Uh, what we can do now is carry this over to our module back here. And we'll just drop that off. Whoops, uh, not you, G. There we go. Okay, so flag's in place now. I'm going to board the ship now. Uh, as the captain, there's stuff that I would need, be, be needing to do, checkouts and stuff, which we'll do in a couple minutes, but um, I'm definitely the first to get back on. And it didn't see anything this time, so that's exactly what I was talking about, where, you know, the voice usually doesn't say ingress successfully. Uh, anyway, I am on board. Uh, just make sure that the oxygen is good. Yes, it is. And turn the HUD off. I don't know why it keeps coming on. Okay, uh, who do we have left? We need to find whoever is in the other module, and they will pack up that module. Okay, that's Cassini. Alright, so we've got Cassini here, and they are going to pack up this module. Make sure we should have two people in this room. Yes, we do. Okay. There's also a safety, um, a safety way you can do it um, to be absolutely certain that I've got the right module. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press G, and I should see the entire Honkin module lift about two feet. Okay, and it's going to rotate. So we know we've got the right one, so I'm going to pack it now. Packing cargo. There we go. And that's just to make sure that this control module wasn't accidentally selected, uh, which would have exposed our other crew to the lack of oxygen environment at minus 300 Fahrenheit. Um, and we're trying to get everybody back to Earth, so obviously that's a very bad idea. This is a very heavy piece of cargo, so I can only move it at about half a meter per second. All right, and now I will get into the ship, and I say I'm going to end up saying I four times. Who is this, Bassini? Too far from airlock. Okay, Cassini's on board. Uh, that means we have two people aboard. Uh, now we're going to select Kepler, and there's nothing Kepler can really do. So we need we need to get all four people out before we can do this. All right, so so Kepler's suit is on. Gonna go ahead and back out of the module now, um, just to make sure we've got. The, yep, we've got the cargo rack there. Um, we've got two pieces of cargo there, and we have three cargoes to go in the rack. So that means one person and one cargo are, are still in the base. Or I guess should I should say what remains of it. 
Okay, three people are on board now. And lastly, Galileo will do the honors of packing up our lovely base here, which will be uh, unfurled one more time on Eapetus. Uh, so let's see, spacesuit is Shift X. All right, spacesuit is on. We are okay to pack the cargo. And this is the last breathable base. There is nobody else in the base except for Galileo, who is wearing a spacesuit. We are safe to pack. Packing cargo. And that's it. The entire base has been packed. And all we got to do now is drop this off at the cargo rack and hop aboard. Controls here can be a little bit finicky. Controlling a person with a joystick is not quite as easy as controlling with the WASD. And that's it. Cargo rack is uh, loaded up, so we just need to uh, do the official honors and um, then use the invisible non-existent crane to lift the entire thing into the XR2 Raven Star. Seriously, if, if, if even, even if it was just a um, uh, a static crane, it, it would be it would be really nice to to have that. But I don't think the XR2 is is being developed anymore, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Too far from airlock. Come on. Okay. Galileo Galilei ingressed successfully. So, head count on the school bus. Dr. Aeronautics, one. Uh, Giovanni Cassini, two. Johannes Kepler, three. And Galileo Galilei, four. That means we are not leaving anybody on the surface of Titan to die. Good. I always like it when things are okay like that. Alright, so now we need to... Um, access our stowing checklist to bring the cargo on board. So let's see if I can find... Here it is. Place cargoes by... Yeah, nine stowing. Place cargoes by UCGO payload adapter. Done. From the UCGO payload adapter, press C as necessary to collect cargo. Alright, so I need to go to... What's Shay O... Saturn something I don't know what that is anyway let's go to the payload adapter and we're here and we're gonna press C as necessary to grapple cargo we should press it three times okay cargo grappled so we've got one thing cargo grappled we've got two one more time cargo grappled Okay, so we have all three cargoes. They're now attached to the module here. Now we're going to go back to the XR2 Raven Star, which is the Saturn Skyhopper. Uh, we're going to go to the bay, uh, payload camera view, uh, highlight bay 2, and grapple. Mm -hmm. 
No grapple target selected. Ah. Why didn't I make that part of the checklist? Payload latched in bay. Got him. Okay, so just to confirm, the entire base is now on board the Saturn Skyhopper. We're good to go. And that is it. So we're now going to proceed with the ground startup checklist. Uh, it's check damaged systems. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We have no damaged systems. Test warning lights. We have three panels to test. All right, one is good. Panel two is good. And panel three is good. So we're going to power on the MFDs here, uh, and we're going to plan our trip so we can get rid of the target here. Uh, we know we're going at this point, so we'll select Saturn. On this side, we'll do Trans-X. Um, we're going to uh, escape Titan. We're going to plan a trip to Eapetus. I think I need to... Um, There we go, select planets and moons. So Eapetus is the third largest, yeah, third largest moon, so there it is. So we'll go ahead and adjust our prograde velocity here to line up with Eapetus. As close as we can get. Whoops, that's the wrong button. All right, that's good right about there. And then we need to simply adjust the time that we eject. Uh-oh. 0.61. Ooh. We missed it. What's the separation? That, that's, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's one... Uh, let's go back to Saturn. What the heck happened here? True longitude, 235.33. It's only 0.3. Um, not sure why that occurred anyway. Uh, do we have this reset? Yes, we do. Okay. Alright, so there's a couple things that we can do to fix this. Uh, first thing we want to do is add just a little bit more oomph so that we are now on the opposite side of the aptus. Uh, next thing we can try to do is add a little bit of outward velocity. and see if that works. All right, so option one is to add about 230 meters per second uh, of outward velocity, and I'm not big on outward velocity. Um, option two is going to be to add um, prograde velocity. So I think I said 230. We'll see uh, we're at 12, 1266. Let me write that down. 1266. So if I do this in prograde velocity, um, not quite there. I do this in prograde. It kind of stinks either way. Thirteen thirty-nine. 
Oh, that's only 73 meters per second. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not big on outward, so let's let's go with this option here. All right, let me let me figure out how to how to solve this issue and then um, we'll continue. Okay, so I've got something that works. As much as I hate it, 174 um, outward velocity is not ideal, but it works. We are a little bit ahead on fuel. Um, we're getting towards the end, so um, this is taking a little bit of a risk, but I, I think so something went wrong with using my assumption that it was okay to use the um, true longitude separation as a uh, way to determine the uh, separation here because even to my eyes that that doesn't look like 80 degrees that that looks more like 70 uh, I, I know it's just 10 degrees but uh, something's got to be off here uh, maybe if I do maybe if I do mean longitude so if I did 321 minus 238. That gives me 83 degrees. No, that's that's still right. Wait a minute. No, 83. That's the opposite. We should have 90, 97. So we're burning 14 degrees too late. So instead of adding 180, I should have subtracted 180, I think. Um, Let's see, if I subtracted 180, that would have given me 80, 82. That's what we're at now. All right, uh, let's see. I'm going to add in actionable items for flight. Okay. The math for determining the launch time for Titan to Iapetus was wrong, and I'll say it was wrong mirrored across. 90 degrees because it, it, it in we're we're seven degrees less than 90 i expect it to be seven degrees more than 90. so i'll mark that down uh let's see trip has been planned determine launch time okay well titan is in a uh, rotational lock with saturn which means that its day is the same as its orbital period which means that any time is the launch time there there's the inclination isn't going to get any better time skip is not necessary going back to the xr2 Honda surface and uh, before i forget let's let's take down the launch uh, in the scratch zone the the launch direction or launch heading is from Transax, uh, there it is, 132.1. Okay, back to the checklist now. Uh, HUD color is desired. I think blue is what we typically go with the Saturn system. Secondary HUD 3. And now it's time to record the ship masses. Okay, so our initial mass should be the same as the final mass. Um, where is our mass readout? It's in the bottom, isn't it? Ah, there it is. Okay, it is uh, 31,000 and 10.71. That's exactly what it was before we skipped. So nothing was burned. Uh, B1, B2, obviously. Or in other words, um, 
no mass was consumed, obviously no fuel was burnt because we didn't go anywhere. Um, mass at the end of the stay, uh, 31,010. Um, actually, now it's 0.7. Okay, so, so we did burn 0.1 kilograms just sitting and planning our our trip here. Um, although I'm going to have to put 0.71 because if I put, put 0.7, it's going to act like we burned fuel, which we didn't. Um, so now we're up to the Titan Ascent. That we'll put as 31,010 point seven. And this is this is not right. That's point point seven one. Oh wait a minute. That's whoops. That's the fuel. Um, not sure what I did there, but two thousand eighty eight point seven is right. Okay. So that's I need to read from my own columns here. Okay. So let's see. B two mass finals correct. Okay. Titan ascent. Fuel before ignition, 2,088.7 kilograms, as expected. Now, the mass of the initial ship, um, other way around, mass of the ship initial, 31,010.7 kilograms. That's a very important number, so I'm going to get it again. 31,000. Zero one zero decimal seven. Okay, that's correct. Our initial velocity is zero, and I think that's it, right? Yep. Final velocity and mass final. That's correct. Okay. Ship masses have been recorded. Uh, configure the MFDs. We already know our direction here, 132.1. Uh, make sure that's not changing. Yep, that's not changing, and it shouldn't because it takes a long time to orbit. It's, it's like two weeks, I think, to orbit Saturn. So that's correct. Um, we don't need to take a look at that anymore, so now I'm going to look at the map. So we're going to go sort of southeasterly. I'm going to configure my orbit MFD here, and we'll go to surface, and we'll zoom in a little bit to get our ground track. MFDs have been configured, tertiary HUD on, temperature display Celsius, APU on. And we're going to be quick about this because this is where we have limited fuel. Okay, uh, open cargo bay doors if needed. They are open. Grapple cargo. Cargo has been grappled. Close cargo bay doors. Okay, the cargo bay has been closed. We'll return to the upper panel view now. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, we'll go to the airlock here. Um, we got to close the airlock here. So I, I think, uh, is that Alt O or Control O? Go to my EVA check. Actually, it's Ingress checklist. Outer airlock door close Control O. Goodbye, Titan. It was an awesome stay here. And that's it. So we begin heating here, and then the next step is to um, Alt-O, open the inner airlock door. So this is what everybody would be doing one at a time that we're not going to simulate because of time. Anyway, we're getting into the ship now. And um, the outer airlock door is closed. We're going to close the inner airlock door. Uh, that is Alt-O.
Okay, now we're going to climb up top. It's a shame that the MFDs here aren't fully functional, because that would be so awesome. Um, I have a uh, VR headset that I wish... Well, it, it's it's uh, track IR. I wish I could use it, but I can't. Okay, we're still on precious fuel here. Um, going back up to checklist item. Close the nose cone. Okay, nose cone has been closed. Uh, check the cabin hatch. The cabin hatch is closed, however, the radiator is open. I think we left that open uh, for the descent because speeds get lower, but here speeds will get higher. So for safety, I'm going to close the radiator. And you can see our coolant temperature is now going to start going up, so we're on the clock here. Okay, that's closed. Uh, check and set fuel. Um, fuel should be 2,088.7. I'm going to check that against the chart. Yep, 2,088.7. Everything looks good. Um, we're expecting 4,375 um, meters per second delta V. Um, this is going to take approximately... Let me see. This is going to be... Approximately 342 kilograms out of the tank, so we're going to end up with um, about 1,700 left in the tank. Uh, zero scram fuel, a uh, little bit of RCS left, but we started with a little bit. That's correct. That's our reserve. Um, APU is now at 75% and decreasing, so we're good. Um, now lights... Uh, no lights are necessary. We are alone here. Information. APU running. Yep, external pulling off. It is. Just make sure life support is running. We have 4,938 days remaining. Uh, 4,938 days is uh, 13 and a half years, which is expected. We need seven years to get back, so I think we're good to go. Um, I know we're good to go. AF control and RCS is desired, so we're going to turn AF Pitch control on. on. RCS rotation. Rotation. Uh, and now we are ready for takeoff. Uh, no pitch trim is necessary at this point now. Um, so we mm -hmm. are ready for our special um, itemized checklist here. Ascent for Titan, number 12. Wait for takeoff time. The takeoff time has come. Uh, now we're going to activate our attitude hold, set pitch of zero, confirm everything that is good, or everything is good around us. It is. Our hover doors need to be open. They are. I'm surprised I didn't uh, add that to the checklist. There's a lot of things missing, honestly. Okay, we're on rotation. Engage the autopilot. And here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hover engine start. Lift off. Okay, we are up. Turning to heading 1, 3, 5. Okay, target heading has been reached. Apply main engine. Gear up. Gear up. Disengage autopilot, and we're going Gear to ascend. Locked. Okay, we're up to speed, removing hover engines. Warning, retro doors open. Yep, we're getting a little bit too high here. We're going to close in our speed. We're going to close the retro and the hover doors now. 
Okay, we should pass a re-entry re -entry check. check. Good. All systems green. Pitch up to 40 degrees, and we're going to add thrust as necessary to maintain the pitch. Okay, so that was pretty intense, um, but that's going to be pretty much it from, from here on out in terms of uh, really um, involved stuff. It, it should be relatively mm -hmm. straightforward and long from here on out. So we're going to go ahead and uh, oh. disable RCS at this point. So we are flying almost vertical, well, halfway to vertical at 127 miles per hour. <laughs> it's amazing how uh, easy it is to fly on Saturn. Apparently, um, if you attached some cosmetic wings to your arms and flapped them, you would be able to fly. Current altitude, 20,000 feet. As the density decreases, we're going to start adding more power. Current altitude, 30,000 feet. This is pretty insane. I'm climbing to space at the same speed that I drive the Acela Regional, or not, not the Acela Regional, Northeast Regional in, uh, in Train Simulator. It's amazing. Okay, we're under 13 kilopascals. Let's check the radiator um, dynamic pressure. It can handle 16, and we got warned at 75, which is 12. So if we're under 12, which we are, we're at two, we can open the radiator. Oh, but we'll get a penalty from drag, which means we'll use more fuel. Let's keep it shut until we need to open it. So there's nothing wrong with opening it later we should be able to fly. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna check our fuel. Uh, we started with 2,088, we're now at 2,022, so we've burned 60 kilograms thus far as seven. All right, we're starting to 
ball, so I'm going to bring us up to 55 meters per second. Current altitude, 40,000 feet. to get some good pictures. Where's Saturn? Let's get one with Saturn. In there. Ah, there it is. Yeah, that, that right there. That's a photograph. Very nice. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off all the displays for this one. Current altitude, 55,000 feet. Information. APU fuel 70%. Yep, we're going to keep an eye on that APU fuel. If it's absolutely necessary, we will turn it off and we'll turn off our air flight control surfaces and use our reaction control system for control. Current altitude 60,000 feet.
Current altitude, 80,000 feet. The atmosphere is now as dense as the Earth's is. Okay, we're now up to about 145 miles per hour. And the trick here is to use only as, as much fuel as you need to stay at 40 degrees pitch up because any excess thrust will be burned off as heat, and we definitely do not want that because we want to make this as fuel efficient as we can. This is the most unpredictable maneuver in the entire mission. And it's, to be honest, it's one of the largest too. Um, if I go back up to my uh, table here, it is larger than everything except what we use to get into orbit around Earth come to the Saturn system and leave the Saturn system and get back to Earth, if you can believe that. Now up to beyond 155 miles an hour, we're now at 103,000 feet. Now up to 165 miles per hour, and currently at uh, 45 kilometers or close to 150,000 feet. You know, this ascent is actually taking so long, I think this is a great use of the uh, atmospheric autopilot or speed. And before I forget, now would be a 
great time to save so that we don't have to do this all over again if something happens and we, uh, the, the sim crashes. So on Earth, this would be about the uh, altitude that we would be getting it to orbit at, and we are still below the clouds with about half an Earth atmosphere of pressure. That's what difference uh, gravity and minus 300 Fahrenheit causes in atmospheric uh, compressibility. Actually, um, Temperature compresses an atmosphere, so this is this is uh, just due to gravity and a great absence of it. I'm curious to see what our indicated airspeed is at right now. Said 50 meters per second, that's about 100 miles an hour. Oh, I think that was it. Yes, that was it. We have just gone over the cloud tops. So this is truly goodbye for Titan, because when, once you go above the, the clouds, things start to disappear on the surface. So we'll get our last view of Scion Escape Lacus, which should be right there, uh, because we've been maintaining a pitch of about 40 degrees this whole time. Uh, it should be a gray spot somewhere down there. It's kind of hard to tell based on the... Uh, it's probably that right there. Very hard to tell um, because of the way the graphics are um, displayed on Titan. Alright, time for more speed. Let's go up to 90 meters per second. Just broke 200 miles an hour. Very nice. It's funny because Titan... Titan has a really dense atmosphere, but it has some really thick clouds, and it's opaque. So, and it's made of a lot of the same. Um, well, actually, it's not made of the same, but it's cold. It's kind of like a gas giant mini me. I mean, it's not a full gas giant because it has a solid surface, but you know, it's it's really opaque. Like you can't you can't see the the core of of Saturn, but you can see the crust of Titan. You know. All right, let's see what the itch is doing now. Okay, it looks like we're decreasing, so we're going to go up to 95 meters per second. So it, it should be a, real, a relatively quick process. Once, once we truly break out of the uh, atmosphere, 
it should be quick. Like as soon as soon as I start using 25s to accelerate over here, we're going to come off of autopilot and and accelerate right up into orbit. Let's see if I know my constellations. This kind of looks like it could be Scorpius. <laughs> nope, it's Leo. I was looking at these three stars, but I guess the thing is those are dim stars. The bright stars um, show that it is Leo. Let's see if I can get another. Yeah. Ooh, there's the sun. And in fact, we're now above the uh, clouds. We might be able to spot Earth. Uh, nope. We are too far away from the Earth. Earth is less than one pixel. We can't see it. Finally, 100 meters per second. So the good news is, regarding the Earth re-entry, I had done a little bit of um, work on the side. Ooh, it's, it's time for five more meters per second. I have done a little bit of work on the side uh, for um, what's coming next to basically make the uh, XR2 behave in the way I want. So what I did was instead of targeting a base and re-entering, I just straight up re-enter on, on basically the center the center of the window and then got the range from that and then using that range I hacked what the XR2's um, coefficient of drag is because I know what the coefficient of lift is uh, well, actually, uh, no, I, I didn't. I had to, I had to decouple that. But anyway, um, the coefficient, not the coefficient, but I know what the area is. I didn't know what the coefficient of lift and the coefficient of drag were. But um, I was able to solve what it was based on the performance, and then I um, applied that to something like thirteen exoplanets, um, which will make an appearance shortly. Uh, in the videos, and uh, it was right for every single one of those, uh, despite them having their own atmospheres. So we have a really accurate re-entry calculator now. Okay, I think it's time for 10 meters per second now. Okay, we're still decelerating. Here's our first 25. This is uh, where we're starting to go orbital. In fact, uh, you can probably take a look at that now. And, no, <laughs> not even close. The nice thing is, the faster we go, though, the, the quicker the static pressure is going to decrease. Let's check, check out our... Ooh, ooh. When we hit 80 degrees, we're going to uh, open up the radiator. 
th- th- that's what I was talking about with that pulling. You, you gotta watch it because we've only got so long. I'm gonna keep my temperature display up now so I can keep an eye on that. We're now at twice 60 kilometers, which is the altitude that you can orbit the Earth at. In other words, 120 kilometers. And it's still about a fifth of the atmosphere pressure on the Earth. Um, We can't see the surface anymore. It is gone. Starting to get quiet. That's a uh, symptom of the pressure dropping. We're now down to about one eighth of an atmosphere. And I think once once we pitch down to 40 degrees again, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go straight for 175 meters per second. And see if see if that works. If that's not too much speed. We're getting close. We are. It's it's an exponential thing. It's exponentially slow at the beginning and then it gets faster and faster and faster. We're still decreasing. Uh, that's good. We can go for 200. All right, now we're increasing again. So, so 200 is about where we should be now for speed. Now let's take a look at the orbit. It's still not worth mentioning. Thirty kilograms. We're gonna be where I was budgeting for orbit. That's not good, especially given that <laughs> the the burn after this is not good. I sense an impending issue. All right, I'm gonna come off of autopilot now. I should know better than to uh, know that if I just kept my indicated airspeed constant the whole time, we, we would be going up at 45 degrees the whole time because air flight performance is based on indicated airspeed. So all I need to do now is just hold an indicated airspeed of 55 meters per second and that's the most efficient thing we can do. I'm surprised it took me this long to figure that out.
wind temperature. Ooh, okay. There's 80 degrees. Okay, so that's that's okay. Um, that's the ship doing what it should. So we're going to open up the um, radiator now. Let's just double check. 16 kilopascal. We're at two. That is acceptable. Open radiator. Okay, coolant temperature is decreasing. Uh, master acknowledge. System reset. So this is going to cause us to pitch up a little bit more, and unfortunately we're also going to take a uh, little bit of an error penalty uh, due to efficiency. But if you look, the radiator is aligned with the flight um, vector, so it should be relatively minimal. Any impacts from this, but we are paying a little bit of a penalty now. Mock one. Oh my gosh, we just broke the sound barrier. Finally. Okay, now we're we're truly going to orbit. We're less than five percent now. So let's go back to orbit. Uh, secondary MFD two. And uh, that's it until we get to main engine cutoff. This couldn't come soon enough because we are now over our anticipated fuel um, usage for this ascent, which really irritates me because I think I added a a, um, a buffer on it, and even with that buffer and and a test, well, no, I did not test. I used equations. our temperature again. Okay, we're down to 77. We're good. Okay, our orbital, our desired orbital altitude is uh, 2905, and we're at 2855 for Apogee. So, what this means is, once this reaches 2905, we reduce to only what we need to maintain 2905 and we recenter well we're pretty much recentered right now but we we basically drift in the uh, flight vector until we reach that information APU fuel 50% okay so we've now used 20% that's okay. As soon, as soon as we hit main engine cutoff here, the, the first main engine cutoff, before circularization, um, we're going to, uh, I, I think we can power down the APU. Yeah, because we're, yeah, we're going into space. 
we we will be done with our air flight control services. We'll power down the APU. Okay, there is 2905 and 2910, so let's bring the engines to a cutoff. We are still in the atmosphere. This should still decrease a little bit. Oh, it's actually increasing. That's kind of interesting. All right, well then in that case, um, let's convert some of that forward oomph to horizontal. Uh, in the meantime, we'll switch this over to five. Uh, radiator is open. Temperature display degrees Kelvin. Uh, elevator trim. Uh, okay, that's coming down. So we don't want to recenter it just yet. See the nice the nice part about shutting this off as the coolant temperature goes down a lot faster, but we're, we're basically past the concern at, at this point. We're coming out of the atmosphere and we're doing it very quickly. So to get into orbit, we're going to need um, Let's see how fast is orbit. Uh, where can I get that information from? I might be able to get that from the patch conic. Yeah, the, the parking is 1760. Okay, so we need to produce 1760 meters per second of delta V. Oh man, we are going to get destroyed here. Um, dang, I really hope we're, we're not pushing an abort because I'm starting to get concerned here. All right, so 1760 meters per second. And the engine produces, we can reset this in the meantime. The engine produces uh, 19 meters Subsonic. Oh, right, because we're, we're decelerating uphill. The engine works at uh, 19 meters per second, so if I do seven, 1760 divided by 19, equals the burn is going to be 93 seconds um, which means that we want to burn when we're about 90 seconds from apogee and we're actually pretty close to that it seems yeah we're already above 300 Did, didn't I raise this orbit based on the fact that we were too far, too far down here? Did I raise the orbit? No, it doesn't look like I did. Yeah, this is not good. <laughs> really bad. Okay, well, and then in that case, we'll just maintain altitude instead of gain it. Rotation. hope this works because if it's a little bit too thick uh, we're gonna take another fuel hit which is no bueno
right, so we're doing about one tenth of the orbital speed, which means we're going to see 10 squared the dynamic pressure. That's going to be a uh, hundred times a hundred or 10 kilopascal. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. man. Um, no. All right, we're going to burn at 10 degrees up. Restarting the engines now. But that is definitely it for the air flight control surfaces. We're on a different orbit now. Um, so we're going to circularize, and we're still not done, and we're over 150 kilograms. This is... Actually, no. We're not going to abort, uh, but it's it's getting closer to where I didn't like. So anyway. Let's continue on with the checklist here. Um, going back, main engine cutoff, secondary HUD 5... Radiator is open still. Uh, temperature display degrees Kelvin. Elevator trim center. Aft control off. RCS rotation. Pitch off. HUD orbit. HUD color as desired. We prefer blue in the Saturnian system. Um, that's it. APU power down. All right, so APU fuels 45%, uh, coolant temperature is 66 and falling quickly. So I'll come back once we get to the time we could do circularization. Okay, we're ready to relight for the circularization. And here we go. we go we're finally in orbit and it's not even circular but uh, maybe we can ignore that um, we may have to change it later if that's not the case burnout velocity 1689 meters per second and I'm gonna get that into the table 1689 uh, current vessel mass is Uh, 30,384.47. Oh my gosh, which means we used 7.4 kilometers per second for that. Okay, that that's going straight into the actionable items. Um, what are we going to say here? Titan Ascent was like three kilometers per second more with three explanation points. I am not happy about that. Uh, current 
fuel uh, before the next burn, 1,544.6 kilograms left in the tank. Um, and mass, at least right now, is um, 30,384.47. Not 74, 47. All right, so comparing our fuel, we're at 1,544 kilograms, and the abort mass is 1,308. So we should see a, uh, whoa, uh, that's really close. How, mu how much margin did we have? 1722. We had like 400 kilograms of margin. 1380 versus 1545. Okay, maybe it looks a little bit smaller than it really is. Um, 1380 to 1544. So we've got 164 kilograms of margin. So we are go to continue. We're going to Eapetus. Okay, so the, the next thing that we need to adjust or address is our um, plane change. So let's go back to uh, transacts. And relative inclination is showing up as 57 degrees. That That's not good. Um, I've only budgeted 92, which means we need to use this ejection orientation as like a cheat code to get out of this. Oh, but first, quick save, because we're now in orbit. Let's try manipulating the sun. Okay, that's not helping. Let's try negative 30, 20, 25, 22, 21, 21 degrees. Oh my gosh, not good. I only budgeted 92 meters per second for this. It looks like the ejection is actually going to occur before we get out of here. Um, that's going to occur at an altitude of 3285, which means we need to change this, and we're going to have to we're going to have to replan the burn because we're at, we're at a, a different altitude than we, what we were expecting. So I want to go to Align Planes, ELS, and put in the new numbers. So it's 30. 5.92 and 287.3. So we should see a relative inclination of 21.47. Okay, that's close enough. All right, so we're going to do the ejection burn first and then the plane change second. And this it was kind of weird, but this is actually going to save us a little bit of fuel. So you see how the um, estimated thrust for the ascending node is four seconds longer that will save us more fuel about four seconds on the on the flip side um so let me just go back and forward and make sure that i uh, know we do have outward velocity all right i'm gonna have to plan this maneuver so let me pause the video and take care of that on the plan Okay, I have our information uh, for the ejection burn. Um, so let's see, the burn vector was uh, 1275 meters per second prograde, um, 174 outward, uh, which means the burn is a total of um, 1287 meters per second at a yaw of eight degrees 
Uh, then I went into the fuel budgeter. Um, we're expecting to consume 107-ish kilograms. And um, lastly, the maneuver timing, we're expecting the burn to be um, 65 seconds long. Okay, so um, all I needed to do uh, planning-wise here is add two notes that I flip these chronologically and they don't impact the fuel burn above here. So um, just flipping these two in their position is not going to harm anything. Um, so we will go ahead and proceed with the next maneuver. Okay, so we are properly out of the Titan atmosphere now. That happened at uh, 700 kilometers. Um, so I'll just add a note. It's simulated below 700 kilometers, which means if I'm at 701 and stay at 701, the atmosphere will have zero effect. That's not how it works in real life, but um, it's kind of how orbiter does it um so let's do our maneuver checklist for good measure um so check throttles off good hover and retro doors we want those closed um they are closed uh rcs mode rotation yep uh lights is desired all lights off it's fine um HUD on, secondary HUD on, tertiary HUD on. Okay, so we're ready to go. We'll turn program. And we have about three minutes to go until the start of the burn. Um, what I'm going to do is turn to... Uh, a yaw of plus eight degrees. And what we want to see is this semi-major difference starting to go down. And whatever I do, I don't want to make it go up. Um, I always want that decreasing, because if not, it means that we're wasting fuel. Uh, it's now time for our pre-maneuver numbers here. So let's see, we have fuel before the burn, 1,544.6 kilograms. Um, initial mass of 30,384 point four. Looks like 0.43 now. Yeah, it's going to be 0.43. And then uh, initial velocity is 1575. And we are ready for the burn. Um, the only thing that I will do is add to the notes column. Um, I guess I'm going to have to add further out than that. Um, Orbit not fully circular due to atmospheric effects. At twenty nine oh five megameters. Right, so, so that's basically me saying, "Hey, uh, I'm not in the orbit that I was planning to be in." So that's affecting the amount of fuel that it took me to get to orbit and it's affecting the amount of fuel that it's going to take to do this burn. I'm not sure where I got those numbers from, but they were completely jacked up. All right, 60 seconds to go. Um, so at this point, I'm going to get into my final attitude, uh, which is a yaw of 8 degrees and the burn's going to be 65 seconds long. And again, we're looking for that semi-major difference to go down, as well as the delta V to count down. Um, there is no plane change, which means all of the attitude should be exclusively y'all. All right, 30 seconds to the burn. Whoops, I gotta turn that off. 
I want to get another. Uh... Okay, uh, auto uh, GPS and pass the backup. Four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Okay. Okay. Semi major difference is coming down pretty quick. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Um, that's not bad, but we gotta fix it with a little bit of out. I'll get the final velocity is uh, 2656, because what we're going to do is not going to add to the velocity. All right, let's see how quickly this changes. more fuel penalty if I can avoid it. We'll have to do a big mid-course correction maneuver later. I knew about that, but oh well. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is the is the final plane change. So let's see. Yep, zero delta V. And of course the semi-meter difference is large now. I have to figure out how, how exactly that works because um, we needed to do give it outward and yet our semi-major difference went up so that's a little bit confusing uh, so the next thing we need to do is get ready for our um, um, plane change no 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 it's not time for that Something's wrong. It, it should not take longer to do our adjustment here. All right, let's spring up the line planes. I want to do an ELS for 35.92. with a land of 287.3. Yeah, it should it should not take longer to burn at the descending node. We're going to be higher. I, I think what, what happened is... Uh, the number that it was assuming we were in our circular orbit and now we're out of our circular orbit. Oh, I put this down for too long. Now I'm, I'm, I'm running close to my limit. This is not good. Final mass, 30,275.8 kilograms. Which means we've already burned 1311. And we haven't done the plane change. Left in the tank, 1,436.1 kilograms. And mass before the next burn, 30,275.8. Let's see, we're burning. Um, we're going to be descending, which means we burn a second. 
I don't know why this thing is, is telling me to engage normal thrust. Um, we're still 24 degrees from the node. I guess that's the problem, is it doesn't think that there is a node now. Uh, let me check my orbit and make sure, okay, yeah, we're not going to crash into the surface. I don't know why it doesn't think that there's going to be a time to note. Very strange. But anyway, that's a short enough of a, of a burn time that we don't have to be super accurate with it. And we've got... Uh, it's like a couple minutes to go here. This is going to be descending, so we burn normal pulse. So we pause here until the note. All right, time to go. Uh, let me just double check. 2439 is our start burn. And 1436.1, uh, 3275.6. All right, that's off by 0.2.6. Okay, now we burn. That is it. And we're at 2430. All right, so getting these numbers in 2430 and our final mass uh, 30,212.1. Fuel before the next burn, 1,372.6. And estimated mass, 30,212.1 kilograms. All right, let's see where we are. We're at 1,372, and we need 1,292. We are only 80 kilograms above our margin. This is very, very close to aborting. All that comfortable margin, gone. Completely gone. Not good. I don't think I've ever been that close. It, 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 all, it all came on that Titan ascent that just ruined all of our margins that we had. Now, granted, that that was something that I had to use theory. That wasn't something that I could really use math to solve. Atmospheres make things hard, and thicker atmospheres make it harder. So, um, yeah, we're gonna have to sit and wait now. So, I'll give it a give it a save. Turn our off. control services off. And we're going to sit and drift here until we get far enough out to do our mid-course correction maneuver. And if we're lucky, that won't destroy whatever margins we have left. If it destroys the margins, and we're 100% sure of it, it's an abort to Earth. I really don't want to do that. I want to see Eopatis.
Okay. Um, we now have an estimated closing distance. It's 288 megameters, which isn't great. Um, yeah, that's not giving us a... Uh, a... Um, what's it called? An encounter. So we have to fix this. So I'm going to spend a long time, like 10 minutes, trying to evaluate all the possible ways that we can do this mid-course correction maneuver. Because it has to be on. We only have 100 meters per second to spare. Well, 100 and 170, or 180, something like that. So this is where we figure it out. It's close, but we can do it. So let's go ahead and get into our uh, orientation. But first, the maneuver checklist, throttles are off, hover and rusher doors are closed, good, RCS mode rotation. rotation. HUD on, secondary HUD on, tertiary HUD on, good. All right, let's find our burn attitude, and get this thing done. Okay, numbers, 1372.6, 30,212.1. Uh, actually, it's 30,211.4. Current speed, uh, 6673, and that's with respect to Saturn itself. And executing the burn in three, two, one, now. Okay, V2, 6613. And let's go ahead and cancel maneuver mode. Oh, yeah. Okay, that, that's good. That is good. There's, um, this, this, this crazy channel that basically, um, memifies um, the evolution of various stars into basically the same thing as country balls. And um, this this thing is hilarious. It's like once once you once you start the uh, once you make your selection it it'll uh, <laughs> there, there, there's a sound effect that'll go ooh yes that's how I feel right now. Um, about how close we're getting to E. Apatis. Okay, so fuel before the next burn is going to be 1337.1. Uh, and then mass before the next burn, 3175.8. Let's see where we're at. So we have 1337.1. We need 1283. So now we have 40 kilograms of margin, but at least we're dead on course now. So whatever complete schlubbery has been happening, uh, it is it, it is behind us. And if we go forward, we'll get to the end of this mission with with all objectives accomplished. So all's to do now is to drift. And there's Iapetus right there.
So Iapetus is pretty big. It's Saturn's third largest moon after Titan, Rhea, and that's it. Okay, our approach distance has stabled out now, so at this point we can plan a second mid-course correction maneuver, if it's mm. needed. Um, yes, it is needed. And it's pretty... no. It can't be prograde velocity. Can't be outward. Come on. I was dead on. <laughs> this is not good. What the... what... Oh man, this is this is insane. We're 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 operating with the efficiency of a I I, I can't say it. Alright, let me let me plan this thing and, and see what we're looking at now. I thought that this was behind us and it seems like we're having another off course day again. Or should I say minute, because it seems like every single one is off course. Alright guys, here we go again. Giant mid-course correction maneuver. Oh, I hate this roller coaster. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing right now in terms of uh, getting close to my margins. I have my margins set for a reason. You know, if if we if we end if we end with uh, zero margins left, well, there's no real problem with that. I mean, obviously, it means that we're less accurate than we thought we were but at least not more accurate, more inaccurate than we planned to be. If we're more accurate, if we're more inaccurate than we plan to be, we have a problem. All right, let's get these numbers in. So for mid-course correction maneuver two, 1337.1 left in the tank, uh, 30,171.1 kilograms of mass, 4,500 83 meters per second. We're really slowing down. That's how far out of Saturn we are. Um, and then we've got uh, V2 of... What is this? Um, actually, we don't know what that is yet, of course. All right, so we're going to do the burn now. We're in our position. I haven't really done the uh, anti-maneuver checklist, so there's no need to do the maneuver checklist. Let's quick save and... Three, two, one, now. That's it. Maneuver mode off, and looks good. At least right now, I hope it doesn't get off of good like it did last time. Okay, V2, 4624. New mass, 30,156.64. Current mass, 1,322.6 kilograms. And estimated mass for the next burn, 30,156.6. So we have 13.22, and we need 12.81. So now we're down to 31 kilograms of margin. I swear, if, 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 this, if this encounter is going to be a disaster, I'm going to absolutely light up. Quick save, and hopefully I will see you guys for the Iapetus encounter.
Alright guys, the news we were hoping for. We're still on target. It will not take three mid-course correction maneuvers. So, um, the uh, next thing that we have is a tight, is a uh, EAP disorbit insertion. Thank goodness our target location is an entire hemisphere, which means it won't require an expensive plane change at all um, to, to do this maneuver. So, thank goodness we have not too many burns left. I can I can see the end of the I can see the end of my uh, mission now on screen. We've got 14 burns left, including this one. I can't believe it hasn't put us in a counter yet. And considering you know, considering we're this far out. Where the heck is Saturn? Saturn is really small uh, this far out. Uh, we're at 4 million kilometers from Saturn. It's still not... Um, it's so small, I can't even find it. Where the heck is... There, uh, nope, that's Eapetus again. Oh, there it is. It's on the night side. Uh, it's very hard to see Saturn. It's, it shows up as a crescent right now. Which means we're on the opposite side. We're on the far side of Saturn, as far out as you can go in the Saturn system. This is as far out as we're getting. Alright, so, to get into orbit, it's going to take 1,126 uh, meters per second. So let's go over to our uh, maneuver timing. Um, let's see, I don't need burn vector, don't need speed matching. It's just maneuver timing. Uh, 1126, ship initial mass 30,145.6 kilograms. Uh, none of this changes. Uh, it's going to be a 56 second burn. Which means we want to start it 28 seconds before periapsis. Okay, Eapetus has now taken over as the gravitationally dominant body. And I am going to get set up in the meantime uh, with our numbers. So we have 1322.6, um, 30,145.6. And I can't get our speed at this time. That's not final yet. And let's confirm our altitude. So we had 85 kilometers. I think we wanted we wanted to get into a circular orbit of 794 500. Thank goodness there's no atmosphere to screw us up. That that's what really screwed us up is the is the atmospheric calculation for the top of the Saturnian atmosphere ruined everything. But um, I think orbiter uses different numbers on Titan than really exist because it simulates the atmosphere as being 288 Kelvin, which isn't true. And I think that screwed all, that's what screwed my calculations up. Is because when, when Titan's atmosphere is 288 Kelvin, it's inflated. But if it's as it normally like its real atmosphere is in real life at 95 Kelvin, it's a lot, lot thinner. Like 300 kilometers would basically equate to 900. That would make sense. Okay, I need to uh, focus here. So the um, radius is 789, not Titania, the Apatus. Seven thirty. All 
right, so we're starting at 730 kilometers and we're targeting 794, 500. So that's uh, 65 kilometers. All right, let's see if we can fix this real quick. So what I need to do is turn prograde. Rotation. Make sure I'm on rotation first. So you see how they've nicknamed Iapetus the yin and yang moon. We're, we're, we want the dark area. That's, that's the area that we're targeting. Anywhere on the dark is fine. Translation. All right, now I need to go I'm, I'm too high. I want to go further down, so that's down. There is 65 kilometers. Rotation. Quick save. And here is Iapetus in all its glory. So we're going to stop with uh, four minutes to go. Six minutes. Five minutes. And four minutes. We're there. Okay. So, turn retrograde. And this is a big burn, so I'm going to run through the maneuver checklist real quick. Check. Throttles off. Hover and retro doors closed. We'll open them later. For RCS mode rotation. Uh, lights as desired. No lights. HUD on. Um, primary, secondary, and tertiary HUDs all on. Ready to go. Um, we should be able to get a velocity estimate off of, yes, um, 1,490. Uh, meters per second is is what uh, is forecast on trans X. So I've got that entered in thirty thousand one hundred forty four point seven kilograms now because we used a little bit of RCS and thirteen twenty two point six in the tank. That's still the same as it should be. All right, so we're ready to go. Um, at uh, 28 seconds from periapsis, that's when we light the engines up. So I was expecting 700 meters per second for this burn. Uh, we're using 1126, so that's quite a bit larger than I was expecting. Uh, not good. I, I think that I think the chances of us aborting after this orbital insertion are quite high. Uh, if that's the case, at least we've made it to the destination. But it, I hate to come this close, come this far, and not be able to to make it. But rules are rules. 
We, we, we violate the red line and we ignore it, there's a good chance we're not getting back to Earth. And that is the absolute highest priority of this mission. From the instant I took off, the very first priority of the mission was get back to Earth. And it will remain so for eternity until we do get back to Earth. All right, we're burning at 28 seconds, which means we have 50 seconds to go. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero, negative one, negative two. Main engine cut off. Maneuver complete. We're exactly in the orbit that we want to be in. Final velocity 366. Current mass of the ship 30,000. 52.32 kilograms. Mass left in the tank, 1,230.3 kilograms. Estimated mass before the next burn, 30052.3 kilograms. There is a very very good reason why I'm being as precise as I am right now. It's because we are very, very, very close to the red line. 1,230.3 kilograms are left in the tank. We need 1,226.4 kilograms. We have Current minus red line value, enter. 3.8 kilograms of margin. Holy cow, that is tight. We're like 50 meters per second away from an abort. But we made it. And the next burn to complete is the landing. Which means we're go for landing. I can't believe it. We're, we're still alive. Okay, that's good. And that's it. Once we've, once we've completed our landing, we're going back to Earth. Very, very, very nice. Okay, well, we're done with Transex. Let's go to Map. And we want to go to 
Eapetus. Okay. Let me guess. I can't uh, can't enter a main. No, I can't enter a main target. That's in my. I have to figure out where the area that I want to land on is. Actually, I should know, right? Because the Saturn leading hemisphere is the dark one. So we got to go we got to go around see what our current uh longitude is. We want to target we want to target an area that's about 90 degrees from our current longitude right here. So 90 behind us or 270 in front of us. Let's see, we are going eastward, so 90 behind us is uh, 60 west. So I'm going to uh, target that right now. Target for mm. Eapetus, 60 degrees west. Okay, so consulting my notes, we want to do a deorbit burn, turn retrograde at 15, and then remove velocity. So I want to do a deorbit burn to 15 kilometers altitude um, when we are 180 degrees from 60 west or 120 degrees east. All right, so until we get to that point. Okay, here's 120 east, so we're going to get our numbers now. Let's see, 1230.3 left in the tank, 30,052.3 kilograms. Um, we're at 365 meters per second, and we're ready to go. Landing burn begin. well, not landing burn, but the deorbit burn begins now. That was it. <laughs> At least for the time being. In fact, that was too much. Translation. Alright, that's it. So now... We're going to coast around to um, the low side of our orbit and perform our landing burn. Okay, so we're on the night or the daytime side of Eapetus now. Um, let's see what kind of terrain we're dealing with right now. Um, right on the edge between light and dark. So let's wait until we're over this dark patch. I mean, the, the nice thing about it is having both in the same area basically means that you could sample both groups. I've already done the... Um, current calculations for landing, so we're all set. And let's see, are we, yep, we're right over it. This is acceptable. So we're going to turn retrograde now. RCS mode is desired. We want rotation. Rotation. Um, AP on. Gear down. Gear down.
gear down and locked. Perfect. Mm. Uh, then we definitely need the retro and hover doors. No lights are necessary. APU can be turned off for the time being. Uh, autopilot. Uh, let's set a descent hold um, for say minus 20. I think we're expecting the velocity to get to minus 27, so minus 20 will be a good slowdown. Um, okay, that's it. And then the next one is the radiator is desired. We can leave that open for the time being. Okay, um, we're in the Attitude, 385 meters per second. That's exactly what we were expecting. There's nothing to write down on the uh, um, the maneuver spreadsheet at this point because it's treated as a single burn. So we're going to quick save. And here we go. Landing burn active. That's it. Whoops. Not M. What did I do on my uh, it's MGH? Velocity of 385. I did my calculations wrong. I, I knew it as soon as I as soon as I went. Okay. Right, let's go on to surface now. It's another thing that I feel like should be on the D land checklist. Um, so let's see, 385, uh, so it's one half M B squared equals M G H. M cancels. So G H equals B squared. What is G? Let's see if we can get that from the object info here. Ah, it's frustrating. I can't get it. I'm going to have to do an off the hand calculation. All right, so the gravity is going to be uh, 1.6 times 10 to the 21. That's the mass times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That's big G divided by our uh, altitude, which is uh, mm. what are we at? Um, 730 kilometers. 730,000 squared. So we get G is 0.2 meters per second squared. So 0 0.2 times the height that we're at, which is like 15 kilometers. No way. That says we should be at 3,000. There's no way that's the case. I think I'm doing it wrong. Let, let me uh, work this calculation again. There's, there's something screwy with how I'm doing this. Ah, the distance to fall. It's 0.2 times 14,000, 15,000. So it's 3,000 is, is the uh, energy. So 3,000 equals 1 half mv squared, which is uh, 6,000 
M cancels, so it's the square root of 6,000. That's, that's going to be our velocity. 77. Okay, that, that sounds right. So that basically means we're going to have 77 meters per second to kill upon land. So we're two and a half seconds from deceleration right now. Uh, once we get to 5,000, I'm going to slow to 20. Let's engage pitch hold. We'll go to surface. Let's see, our shadow should be in that direction. Actually, I'll slow to 50 for the time being. 5,000. Slow to 50. Four thousand. I'm gonna slow to 40. Now, if we really need to, I, we can we can stop the ship in uh, three seconds at, at our current speed. Three thousand. All right, slow to thirty. Two thousand. Slow into twenty. Hey. I'm surprised you there's are no to land. increment for ten. I feel like they should have one. Let's see, at 20 meters per second, landing will come in a minute. One thousand. Nine hundred. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Six hundred. Five hundred. All right, slow to fifteen. Whoops, that's not the right direction. Three hundred. Two hundred. Slow to ten. One hundred. Seventy-five. Slow to seven and a half. Slow to 50, five. Fifty. Forty. Two and a half. Thirty. Two. Twenty. Fifteen. Ten. One. Eight. Six, four, one three, half, two, point two, one. Touchdown. All stop. Lift touchdown. Lift touchdown. Touchdown.
Touchdown. Touchdown. Okay, we're touchdown. having <laughs> touchdown. these little touchdown. gravitational touchdown. glitches. Touchdown. Come on. Come on, brakes. Lift up. Touchdown. 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 We're on the surface. Touchdown. It's just Lift touchdown. Well, I guess with this kind of... Uh, stop. There we go. With this kind of glitchy behavior, I don't know if we want to set up the base or not. Maybe we'll EVA and see what it does, and if the EVA kind of stinks, then we won't do it. But anyway, here we are on the nice and dark surface of Eapetus. So uh, we have landed now. Uh, we want to secure so the radiator is stowed. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Then we've got uh, shutdown. AF control off. RCS off. mode off. Tertiary HUD off. Secondary HUD off. Main HUD off. Uh, display here. Make sure that everything is good. Okay. Displays Celsius. Actually, I wanted Fahrenheit for that. Uh, MFDs off. All lights off. Mission elapsed timer note, so we're 1498 days. Cabin hatch just desired closed. Nose cone open, so we need the APU on. There it is. Nose cone open. Okay, inner airlock door as desired, so we want that uh, we want that closed. We're gonna have to open up the outer airlock door, and because there is a um, vacuum, we're going to have to um, depressurize. So, it's Alt O to get the airlock inner door open. going to uh, hop inside here, Alt O again, alright we're sealed, spacesuits on, time to evacuate. Airlock depressurizing. Airlock pressure, zero PSI. Okay, and now we can open the outer door, which I think is control O. Ah, and there is the surface of the apatus. All that's left now is to hop out. Quick save. Oh, and we also want to turn. Let's get through the rest of this checklist. Um, bay doors is desired. We'll leave them closed for now. APU off. And we have no external cooling available, but let's see. We are maintaining our temperature with the radiator open. Yes, radiator is open. Okay. Now we can hop out. Egress successful. All right, let's see, can we walk, or are we going to glitch? Oh, we're, we're actually walking. Oh, no, no. No, we're glitching. Okay, yeah, no base. 
But at least we get to spacewalk a little bit, you know? Alright, let's go back to the Skyhopper, and I want to see here um, what our fuel situation is. We, we need to capture that at the, at the very end, um, where we sit. So we know the V2 is zero. Our current ship mass is 29,887.7 kilograms. No way. Oh, okay, oh. Here comes the 1222 to 1223 time frame. Oh, I hate that Copy. stupid radio stuff. We got to get back on board the ship because when I hopped out, it changed the mass of the ship. So the the ma literally the the mass of my body off of the ship um, is is showing us as having consumed more fuel than we actually did. So we need to get back on board the ship to write the mass. There we go. Okay, much better. 30,000. 007.7. Hey, 544. We, we used less fuel than anticipated. Yes, we finished strong. Mm -hmm. Houston, we see our targets. Uh, we have a go for GPS incorporation. Current mass okay, of fuel, hello. eleven eighty-nine point eight kilograms. Estimated mass at the start of the next burn, three zero 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 seven point seven. And we know that the first velocity is going to be zero. Okay, so let's see if we if we clawed back margins. Mass before eleven eighty nine point eight, mass before eleven seventy five point seven. We have fourteen kilograms of margin. We clawed back ten by saving fuel on the descent. That's good. That makes me very happy. So, we'll go ahead and sit like this on the surface. Um, like I said, no base. Um, it's just it's just too glitchy here. But we made it. Uh, we uh, spacewalked, which is very nice. And this is as far out from Saturn as, as you can get and, and have a round moon. Uh, you can just barely see the crescent of Saturn right there. It's uh, not much bigger than my thumb. I put my thumb hey, over it, so... We're going to leave it there. So, current current margins, 14 uh, kilograms of fuel. And next episode will bring us all home. We're sitting here on Eaptus in the dark region. We're going to ascend... We're going to escape in the Saturnian system, escape Saturn, perform a transfer burn back to the Earth, come down to the Earth, perform our last ginormous Earth orbital insertion, and let me tell you, that burn is going to be the most planned burn of them all, because if that's off, uh, the mission will be lost, because the that burn is very squirrely. It's very easy to get a high delta V to slow down. So we'll be careful about that. We'll perform our orbital insertion. And lastly, we'll do a uh, re-entry and glide down to uh, land at our base, which was Wall of Flight Facility. So at the end of the next episode, we will be on the ground at Earth, Wolf's Flight Facility in Eastern Virginia on the Delmarva Peninsula at a hangar unloading everything. I'm Dr. Aeronautics. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time for the epic conclusion. Bye-bye.